Well, it's that time of year. At least it would have been were it not for the pandemic in our midst. As summer vacation approaches, and if months of music lessons had been drawing to a close, millions of kids would now be nervously preparing for their final recital. This week's three breathtaking podcasts, each entitled Take a Bow, each featuring songs about the agony and or ecstasy of performing, are presented in their honor. Here I am at my piano with my Mozart piece again. Next month is the big recital and I have to get it right by then. Ah, This second part is much too difficult for any kid to play. Fingers just weren't meant to move this fast Who wrote this turkey anyway? I did, it's not difficult A simple scale in C I'm Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart And I could have played this at age three Try it again Ah, there's no need to get Discouraged, it takes time to learn to play. Practice it a little slower. You must let your fingers lead the way. Like this? That's good. Very nice. And again. All that afternoon he stayed. We played scales in C. Every day we met at my piano, Wolfgang and his piece and me. And it filled the library The crowd grew hushed And I was nervous Until Mozart turned and said to me I'm very proud of how you've worked Now show them how you play I sat down at the grand piano And I let my fingers lead the way Cause I think of it as our duet That was a Mozart duet performed by Tom Chapin. Needless to say, piano performances are only one reason to take a bow. And needless to say, kids are not the only ones who know the agony and or ecstasy of facing an audience. Here's a song about a fully grown man determined to play the French horn. Entitled Ill Wind, it's performed by Flanders and Swan. One quick word of introduction about this delightful British comedy duo, Michael Flanders, who parenthetically was a polio survivor and wheelchair user, wrote the team's lyrics. Donald Swan wrote the music, although in this case, as you'll see in a moment, he didn't have to. It has long been my earnest wish to 
improve the standard of the music we have in these shows of ours. Thank you and very this, much. Not at all, my dear sir. I think well, you know that nobody has a higher opinion of your work than you do yourself. <laughs> I simply meant we should have some more good music. And to this end, I have been practicing the horn, or French horn, as they call it. German horn, as the French call it. Not, not to be confused with the corps anglais. It's a marvellous instrument. I took it up because I very much wanted to, uh, to play the music of Mozart, in particular his wonderful horn concerto in E-flat, Kirchel rating 495, which he wrote at the age of about uh, 18 months. That's a marvellous man. I practiced it very hard against considerable opposition, I may say, and I had hoped this evening to give you the very first performance of the last movement, the Rondo Allegro Vivace. Uh, I think to curious circumstances, as yet unexplained, I am not able to do this. Uh, I can only tell you why. I once had a whim and I had to obey it To buy a French horn in a second-hand shop I polished it up and I started to play it In spite of the neighbours who begged me to stop <laughs> To sound my horn I had to develop my horn For sure I found my horn Was a bit of a devil to play So artfully wound To give you a sound, a beautiful sound So rich and round the hours I had to spend before I mastered it in the end. But that was yesterday, and just today I looked in the usual place. There was the case, but the horn itself was missing. But where can it have gone? Haven't you, hasn't anyone seen my horn? But where can it have gone? What a blow! Now I know I'm unable to play my allegro. Who's white? That horn, I bet you a quip, somebody did, knowing I found a concerto and wanted to play it, afraid of my talent at playing the horn, for early to date of my utter dismay, it had vanished away like the dew in the horn. that horn. I know I was using it yesterday. I've lost that horn. Lost that horn. Found that horn. Gone. The stop I chose to play. I think it may a reward. I know some hearty folk whose party jokes pretending to hunt with a corn. Gone away. Gone away. Was it one of them took it away? Can you kindly return that horn? Oh, where is the devil who pinched my horn? I shall tell the police I want that French horn back. I miss its music more and more and more. Without that horn, I'm feeling sad and so forlorn. Oh. I found a concerto of what is it made this way? My talent of playing the horn, but early to date of my utter dismay, it had totally vanished away. I practiced the horn and I wanted to play it, but somebody took it away. I practiced the horn and was longing to play it, but somebody took it away. My neighbor's asleep in his bed. I'll still make him wish he were dead. I'll take up the tuber instead. Wah, wah. Okay, so far we've featured a budding pianist and a budding French horn player. Today's podcast concludes with the trials and tribulations of a country singer yearning to be an opera star. Here is Kelly O'Hara singing They Won't Let You in the Opera. Hit it, boys! Not for something totally different, right? All right, here we go. Hold your hat, y'all. I'll tell you a little story about myself. Now, I was born down in Georgia, but Georgia wasn't good enough for me. I'd sing country songs for them, but my heart sang La Boheme, and it didn't help me move to Tennessee. Nashville's not the place you sing, I see. If you want to sing it all, you best sing country. So I picked up how to do it pretty fast. Be a country star, go in the sticks them hicks don't know. Verity's Rigoletto from their ass. Oh, country star is how I came to pass. But 
I'll sing opera one day. It's like Opry with an A. I told my agent in his fancy car, and it pained him, I could tell, when he said no chance in hell. They won't let you in the opera if you're a country star. Is it the way I say obligato? So I took that country singing job and shoved it. And I headed to the Met in NYC. I know that stage is hard to reach, but Domingo likes a peach. You should hear that tenor voice sing rockabilly. Now I'm trying out for the barber of Seville. When a voice booms from the house, from those tassels on your blouse, I can tell you've got a twang and play guitar. <laughs> I bet they love you in the South, but please don't open your mouth. We can't let you in. If you're a country star, cause no patron trusts an opera in the hands of a country star. Do you think I can? Well, cause I got long pink fingernails. I had to play more country songs just to stay afloat. Though I eat is my role, I'm in a southern pigeonhole. I sing like Mary Callis, but no one's heard a note. Till I charmed an old blowhard who owns half a Juilliard. Said my singing was so beautifully cried. Well, time went by, I gave up on the opera <laughs> Grabbed a man, got ready for a kid Though Lascala never called My ears still get enthralled When I hear a great soprano blow her lid So head up to the opera house I did But as vibrato start to shake I feel my water break I'd never even make it down the aisle If you'd have been there you'd have seen From that second mezzanine First ahead, then two feet From my $90 seat Right away, my dear. 
We have daycare, please sign here. Been my dream since I seen country. Now I'm an But you were the best part of the opera by far. Now, a crib ain't where you're needing pearls of wisdom. But listen up before you've cried a word. When you hear no, don't get upset. It means yes, but just not yet. Fight the most when folks say you're absurd. In the end, I believe we all get hurt. But if I may suggest one rule before I'm no longer cool, what you do ain't always who you are. So if you find your heart is set on both Memphis and the Met, and they force you to choose, screw them both, go sing the blues. But your ass, you can sing a rock if you're a country I hope you enjoyed Take a Bow, Part 1. Come back on Tuesday for more songs about performing. Signing off for now with a song in my heart.